Hello, I'm George Liston, CA. Welcome to Dialogue, a program that explores the world of ideas and issues in international affairs, history, and culture. When the intrepid Portuguese explorer Pedro Álvarez Cabral first set foot in the New World on April 22, 1500, he thought that he had discovered an island. He could not know that the ground beneath his feet was destined to become a continent-sized nation, Brazil, that would one day project its distinctive culture and lyrical voice to a fascinated world. One important path for that projection has been the phenomenal worldwide success of Brazil's media giant, TV Globo. The programming Globo offers has captured the imagination of a world audience and blended artistic vision and social conscience into a progressive interpretation of a dynamic national culture. My guest is Amori Suarez, Chief Executive Officer of Globo International in New York City. Amori, seja bem-vindo ao nosso programa. Obrigado, thank you. It's very good to have you. It's excellent to have you here, and this is a wonderful subject to discuss. I think the way to start, Amori, is to acquaint our audience with uh, the size and the sophistication and the power that Globo represents as a, as I said, media giant. One of the best ways, since we're talking about television on television, is to look at television. So let's look at a clip okay. and have you talk a little bit about what it means to us. All right. Rio is a city of cinematographic beauty. It is in this setting of such rare and diverse landscapes that one finds the largest and most modern television production center in Latin America. Welcome to Global's Production Center Studios. Uh, Marie, that was just a teaser, as we say, but it, it certainly showed all of us uh, a very beautiful and very large installation. Reminds me of Cine Cita, the, the what the Italians had yeah. in Rome. Tell us a bit about it. I mean, what goes on there? Yeah. Uh, global headquarters are in, in Rio de Janeiro, but we have facilities in Sao Paulo as well, in Brazil, our capital. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, you know, what, the, what is interesting in this, in this scene, in this story, is that global... Uh, Global become become a very large television group, based you know based only in a Brazilian culture and Brazilian image and Brazilian authors. Using everything authentically Brazilian. E using everything Brazilian, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's it's for us it's especially interesting because it, we are a country surrounded by. Hispanic countries, right. Spanish language countries in Latin America. We don't speak uh, Spanish, we speak Portuguese, and uh, we have a very different culture, a different mixed culture in Brazil, and we use that in order to mm -hmm. get international, in order to get, you know, uh, global. Right. And uh, it's been a very interesting journey for us. Yeah, you know, I'm, I, you made excellent points, and, uh, and one in particular I want to seize on right now, uh, well, two. The way that Global, and the, the range of Global's programming is enormous. I mean, it's everything that's, the novellas are particularly uh, uh, publicly known. But all of that Brazilian-centered programming you've described has attracted an enormous international audience. Why is, do you think that's so? You're, I think 53 countries are broadcasting yeah, Global we, Presence. Yeah, we sell our novellas mm -hmm. to more than 130 countries. Mm -hmm. And right now, at least 50 50 or 60 countries mm -hmm. are airing at least one of our productions. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know that story. If you if you want to to be cosmopolitan, you have to talk about yourself. You have right. to talk about your hometown. Right. right. So it's 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 our story. We are talking to the world about mm -hmm. our way of life. You know, that's, that's very true. That's a wonderful point. To be a uh, cosmopolitan, you have to be authentic, you have to be yourself yeah. and project that. The amazing thing is, I, the other day I was talking to a Russian friend. Globo's uh, uh, radio uh, television dramas are number one in Russia. I've heard of the same thing from Israel and from Mexico. Yeah. So it really does have an appeal. If we turn that question around, Amari, the fact that you are now so well-known, so popular in so many places, does that influence the kind of programming decisions you're now making? 
are you producing in, with that in mind, in a way, so to speak? Yeah, uh, I think we have to think this from now, mm -hmm. you know, uh, for the future. Uh, I have, because there is so there is so many uh, in interest in our novellas that we are we are thinking in start to produce uh, novellas in another language. Mm -hmm. Such as Russian or Spanish or French. I mean, original productions oh, in those languages. Exactly, exactly. Oh. Uh, using our our tests, Brazilian books, Brazilian stories, but shooting originally in another language. Fascinating. In, in order to attend this, those markets, because mm -hmm. they are so interested in in, in, in Brazilian and in, in global novellas that we have to think about it, because uh, because the. When you dub it to, to another language is, is one thing, but mm -hmm. when you shoot it originally in another language, mm -hmm. I think you can do better for another audience I outside of Brazil. I completely agree. So uh, we are preparing global mm -hmm. for, you know, start to produce novellas in Russian, in, in, in French, Chinese, originally and Spanish, or, originally. That's, that's fantastic. I mean, I hadn't expected that answer, but that's, that's really quite wonderful. Um, one of the things we're clearly talking about, now you actually are very explicit about this in the first answer, is by being um, authentic, by being honest to Brazilian culture and projecting it, uh, you've attracted this worldwide audience and it's only going to grow. Which raises the very interesting question, Amari, of what is distinctive about Brazilian culture? I mean, what do you think is the, if you view this question not just in terms of broadcasting, but in terms of what the country represents philosophically, historically, culturally, socially, why is it attractive? Brazil is a melting pot. I know you, you, you know Brazil very well. You lived there. You know Brazilian people. Uh, Brazil is really, is truly a melting pot. We have, we have so different cultures mm -hmm. living together. Part of Brazilian culture, Brazilian identity today. I'm going to give you an example. Today in Israel, the most watched TV program is a Brazilian, no, is a Brazilian novella. It's a novella from Global. It's about a Muslim family living in Rio de Janeiro. Mm. We did this novella before September 11, when nobody, when nobody was talking about Muslim, like today, right. yeah. Muslim family. Why? Because we have Muslims in Brazil. Mm. We have the, the largest Japanese community outside of Japan in Sao Paulo. Mm -hmm. we, we have the largest African city in the world out, outside of Africa, in Salvador, Bahia. Mm -hmm. We have a, a huge Italy community in Sao Paulo and south of Brazil. We have a Dutch city in Northeast Recife. Right, right, right. So we got influence from very different people from different parts of the world. The world. I think we, were, we are lucky. We were lucky in the past when we got immigrants from Europe, Africa, mm -hmm. uh, Middle East, everywhere, Asia. So today, Brazil is is this 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 mixing, this mixed thing, the melting pot, and I think this is important today. Yeah, you know, it, well, I'm again, uh, I'm learning something with everything you say because to go back to what something you said a moment ago that you were doing this programming, for example, about Muslims in Rio prior to September 11th, yeah. prior to the world's uh, attention to this. I mean, that speaks volumes about. About, uh, about this entire subject. You know, there's another aspect to this too, and I think we're, we're getting into this now with this, the kind of broad range of Globo's programming. And um, if you don't mind, I'm gonna go a bit in your personal history on this one. I know you were trained uh, in both uh, journalism and, and, soci and, and, and sociology and mm -hmm. social communication. And I think it's appropriate, Amari, to really give you a lot of credit for this, what I'm about to say. One of the aspects of Tebe Global that's most appealing to people is its social commitment as well. Uh, talk a little bit about that. Why, what is that? I mean, what does it amount to? Why were you so uh, keen on making it happen? Mm -hmm. uh, and what kind of programming does it represent? In? We dedicate a huge part of our airtime mm -hmm. to social cause, mm -hmm. uh, uh, even in journalism. Uh, we, we are very proud of one, one thing, one uh, conception that we create in global, we called it social cause placement. Hmm. You know, we, we we follow the steps of product placement, right? But we use this 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 technology, this know-how for social cause. So social cause placement in in our you, novellas. You mean, for example, um, 
AIDS or a health issue, exactly. that would be such a cause, exactly. and you would place, you'd make a de conscious decision to place that in We put that inside of our novellas. Ah. We put characters leaving the problem. Drugs, mm -hmm. uh, drugs abuse, um, AIDS, mm -hmm. um, any kind of social is important issue, mm -hmm. we, uh, our, our authors put inside the novellas. So during eight months, uh, the whole country discuss that issue, mm -hmm. learn about, about that, and, 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 uh, and we can you know, create a sense of the, 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 the knowledge, social knowledge about mm -hmm. something important for the That's country. Been Another uh, way of looking at your effectiveness is to, is to think about Brazilians in this country. And this, it's, it's kind of interesting, Amaury, to my mind, because, as you know, the Hispanic population is uh, enormously important in America. The uh, Brazilian community is quite substantial, too, but perhaps not quite so well known uh, to many Americans that its size, its power, where it is, and so forth. But I know that you have, uh, through Globo, played special emphasis or paid special attention yeah. to their needs. Once again, let's look at a couple of clips and, and get a sense of this. All right. Chegar num país estranho, que fala outro idioma, com pessoas diferentes, com costumes diferentes, não é nada fácil. Mas o imigrante não está só. Consulados e centros comunitários podem ajudar e muito a garantir os direitos do cidadão. Consulado Brasileiro tão importante e tão pouco conhecido. Este é o de Los Angeles, nos Estados Unidos, mas poderia ser qualquer outro da Europa, África ou Austrália. A verdade sobre nossos consulados é que os que mais precisam são os que menos procuram. Na verdade é uma pena que seja assim. Eu reconheço que há muita gente que não chega perto do consulado temendo, por exemplo, que um consulado tenha ligações com o governo dos Estados Unidos. O que não é verdade absolutamente. That makes some important points, Amory. And it, it, what I'm struck by is how much of that is addressed to Brazilians' immigrant community, but also, particularly, those who may not have papers. And uh, tell us a bit about that community. How how large is it, and how big a part of it may not, may be needing those kinds of help? Yeah, one million Brazilians are living in the U.S. today. One million. One million Brazilians. Mm. This number is an estimative. It's very hard to know the exact number because. A major, a major part of this uh, population really is uh, illegal, undocumented. Mm -hmm. uh, that's because we, nobody knows exactly how much Brazilians are in the U.S., right. but the number accepted today is one million. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very large population. Uh, it's something not very well known because, you know, Brazilians is not uh, together with another Latins, because that's the true. language, that's so true. Brazilians speak Portuguese, so the Brazilian community is always, you know, a, a, a separate community, mm -hmm. not, not together with the Mexicans mm -hmm. or, you know, mm -hmm. Venez from Venezuela, or because the language, there is, there is a, a, a barrier, exactly. you know, between them. So uh, they are spread in, in, in the country, but mainly, mainly in, in, in Florida, in Connecticut, Massachusetts, uh, New Jersey, New York. Uh, and some a little bit in California. Mm -hmm. uh, this show, Planeta Brasil, Brazilian Planet, is, is a weekly show that we aired uh, in 64 countries uh, in our international channel. It's a Portuguese-speaking channel mm -hmm. for Brazilians who live abroad. Uh, this show is about exactly this, living abroad. Right. Legal, legally or illegally, illegally. but mainly illegally. Mm -hmm. we, we, you know, we, we, we don't in incentive immigration at all, but once uh, the Brazilian people are living abroad, we have to talk to them. I think that's ex a perfect example of your social conscience. It's not that you encourage anyone exactly. to, to immigrate or immigrate illegally, but the fact of the matter is when people are here, they have to be helped. It's very important, George, for us to, to, to make clear that mm -hmm. we, we not encouraged at all, you know, we know that's very risky, they cross the river, they mm -hmm. cross the border, uh, uh, many die, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's something very serious and, and illegal, right? right? So, but once they are here, mm -hmm. once we have one million Brazilians living in the United States, we have to talk to them. There's a responsibility. In fact, <clears throat> when we begin to talk about the novellas, we will discuss that very topic of, uh, you know, people crossing the border and the dangers it represents. Um, I want to go now to a clip, Amari, that's going to demonstrate something I was fascinated to learn. That's the economic power 
of the people we're talking about. So okay. let's take a look at this. Yeah. A estimativa do Banco Interamericano de Desenvolvimento é de que os brasileiros mandem cerca de 2 bilhões e meio de dólares por ano para as famílias no Brasil. A maior parte desse dinheiro é enviada por meio de casas de câmbio, uma movimentação financeira sobre a qual o Banco Central não tem controle. O economista Stephen Murphy trabalha para o Banco Interamericano de Desenvolvimento. Ele está fazendo um estudo sobre as remessas de dinheiro dos imigrantes para seus países de origem. O que o economista quer mostrar é que todo este dinheiro que chega ao Brasil poderia crescer em 400 milhões de dólares por ano se as taxas de remessa fossem reduzidas. O projeto do BID é estimular os grandes bancos comerciais brasileiros a entrar nesse mercado, fazendo convênios com empresas de remessa nos Estados Unidos e em outros países. Eles querem também tornar isentas de taxas as remessas de até 500 dólares por mês. A Marie... This is a vast subject we could spend days talking yes. about. I'm going to ask you to make one just brief comment on it, though, because there's some other things I also want us to bring into this. Uh, I was stunned at the amount of money that goes back to Brazil and elsewhere from that community here. I mean, what's your what's your impression of that? Yeah, as you know, I I I I love this issue. You know, this because this is this is getting more and more complex, mm -hmm. and uh, I think nobody's you know discussing it. As deep as, as as important to do. Uh, I have an update for, of those numbers. Mm -hmm. The reporter told two billion dollars. Mm -hmm. It was in 2003. In 2004, it was almost three billion dollars. Three billion. So Brazilian people living in U.S. sent back to our country three billion dollars. These numbers are from Inter American Develop, Develop, Development Bank, but. The whole number about Latin American people mm -hmm. living in the U.S. is $45 billion. Wow. So Latin Americans living in the U.S., working in the U.S., sent back to their countries Please. last year, 2004, $45, 45 billion. billion dollars. Dollars. Mainly Mexicans and the second Brazilians. But there is a number from Inter-American Development Bank about how much they kept mm -hmm. in, in this country. In this country. Mm -hmm. And the number is amazing, $450 billion. Wow. So uh, the direct contribution from Latin American workers in the U.S. in 2004 was $400, $450 billion. And they sent back 10% of it. You know, I, I, quite frankly, $40, $45 um, million. Dollars. I think that makes a very powerful uh, bottom line statement about the, the, the contribution of immigrants to this, to this society. So thank you for that. Um, like I say, this, I'm so happy that Globo treats this subject because it is not just for this country, but I think for so many in the countries in the world, a major topic uh, these days. Yeah, and this, this, that show, Planeta Brasil, you know, we try to, we try to help, we try to, you know, contribute to to the to this population, because even illegal immigrants mm -hmm. have uh, worker rights, right. human rights, right. civil rights. They can, you know, they can be helped by the consulates, embassies, mm -hmm. or even American agencies. So we try to, you know, we try to clarify some legislation. We have, we talk all the time with uh, uh, immigration department in U.S., mm -hmm. you know, and try to put together information right. uh, useful for, mm -hmm. for those immigrants. Mm -hmm. And what is, it, another interesting thing, very objective, is when we put uh, stories or su successful initiatives from Brazilian communities in our show, we can duplicate this. For instance, the Brazilian population in Florida uh, create uh, uh, they, they create with the, 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 some cities or with the state of Florida, mm -hmm. they create regular school, public school, bilingual in Portuguese right, and, and English. English yeah. So the, the Brazilian children can go to school, can be educated in English, mm -hmm. but can keep learning Portuguese. Mm -hmm their native language. So this integrates them in society and preserves their culture. Exactly. And it's time. good for Florida because, you know, this is a very important community right. down there. Right. So when we put this story in the air, we got calls from everywhere in the United States, Japan. There are 300,000 Brazilians in Japan hmm. and, and uh, as uh, temporary workers. You know, you know, when you tell me stories like that, it points up what a connector 
Globo is uh, in, in, in programs like this and concerns like that. Um, and that's, that's extremely, I, mean, I appreciate that example very much, but it reminds me of another uh, very different kind of connection you make too. And that's, and I'm fascinated by this, I think this is absolutely charming, and I want to let this clip speak for itself, but it's the connection between Brazilians here and Brazilians at home. Take a look at this and tell me what you, th what you think of it. A videoconferência dá a oportunidade das famílias participarem de momentos importantes na vida de quem está tão longe. Hoje, os parentes da Cristiane vão acompanhar o casamento dela aqui em Framingham, mesmo estando lá em Governador Valadares. Cristiane entra na sala de braços dados com o irmão. O pai dela não pôde vir aos Estados Unidos, mas a filha fez questão que, mesmo distante, ele estivesse presente. É, acho que é importante, meu, principalmente meu pai, me ver de noivo, me ver casando. É muito importante isso com meus pais. É um prazer ter vocês conosco aqui nessa sala, mesmo pelo telão. Por duas horas, o seu custódio e a dona Maria Lúcia ficaram com os olhos cheios de saudade. Casaram a filha com um rapaz que eles só conhecem pelo telão. O sim teve que ser dito em voz alta. Sim! Cristiane e Fabiano se conheceram nos Estados Unidos e namoram há um ano. Ele também é brasileiro, mas só hoje teve a chance de conhecer toda a família dela. Cadê o tio Edson? Vem mais pra cá! A tia Alice e o tio Edson. Só faltou o abraço dos pais, mas para eles, a emoção de ver a filha tenta compensar a distância. Ouviu o que o falou, cuide bem dela. Muito grande a emoção, o jeito que eu entrei, todo mundo viu. É muito bom. Difícil para Cristiane foi ouvir a mãe, receber a bênção de Dona Maria Lúcia, sem poder abraçá-la. Eu amo demais você. E vou te amar muito, de hoje em dia. Choro, saudade e uma alegria no coração que a tecnologia foi capaz de proporcionar. As fronteiras da saudade estão longe, bem longe de um limite. Mas a gente pode sim encontrar caminhos para se aproximar de quem a gente mais gosta. Até quando Deus quiser saudade. Now, Marie, just a, a brief comment on this one, uh, because we, uh, once again we could talk for days on it, but uh, I love that the quote there about the uh, connection of emotion that technology makes possible, which is the spirit of this. How much of this kind of thing do you do? Um, how, do, do you mean the, this, how often? The, 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 yes, the, for example, to, to let the fact that we have uh, the Brazilian and uh, uh, the family participating in something that's going on here. I thought that was quite quite original. Yeah, it's, 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 it it happens all the time, huh. and and uh, and um, because there is a very unique um, aspect of the the the, the immigrant life. Mm -hmm. So the Brazilian guy, the Brazilian woman came to the United States in order to get a job, to get an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Those people they they find it here, but they left behind family. Roots, friends, right. mothers, fathers. Mm -hmm. there, is a, there is a very important psychological, emotional point in this situation. Because there, there are people here who is far from Brazil for 10 years, 15 years. You know, their, 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 their fathers uh, died. Right. They couldn't go, to, you know, mm -hmm. there. They, you know, they, they have new brothers. They who they don't know so it's it, there is there is you know there is a, a very intense feeling you know they we have a, we have a word for that saudade saudade is yes saudade is right. you know it's untranslatable it's, but it's yes you, nostalgia you can do better than longing but you know, you know it's a beautiful word saudade is homesickness right. but it's, it's they they suffer with this with it mm -hmm. you know so and and they can and they why they don't go back because they are undocumented here mm -hmm. and if they go back yeah. they, they might not get back in. exactly mm -hmm. they want right. so we we try to put those two world wo worlds disconnected together yeah. you know and we, we are thinking and, and and do a show specific ab about it you know mm -hmm. every week put families together and discuss it and talk to immigration and aspects and, and you know see what we can do
and very, very frequently we interview psycho psychologists, uh, specialists in this kind of emotion and behavior in order to help those people, you know, to, you know, oh, to handle it. That's to, another yeah. social commitment. Then, exactly. We, 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 we use a lot of uh, uh, very, very good psychologists and, and specialists in, in behavior and, and this kind of emotional. There are very good American specialists in, 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 in immigration or the, mm -hmm. the emotional aspects of immigration. So we, we interview them in order to, you know, offer information, tips mm -hmm. for those people so they can, they can handle the saudade uh, all, all the time, you know. Yeah, well, that's, that's one, I mean, in other words, the people are not just subjects on television. They become people that you, you consciously try to help in ways that relate to what they're, they're living with. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. so television is for people. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, everything is about people on, on, on TV. So we try, we, it's, 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 we have to, you have to put your, you know, viewer inside the TV, not the other way around, you know, we are talking about them. So we have to put them in our, in our, wow. in our you know, uh, programming. It's, it couldn't be different, you know. I couldn't have said it better. And television is about people it's, and bringing them in. in, in exactly. The, the it's, it's totally. We have in Sao Paulo a, a very interesting project called, you know, social, um, it's, we call community journalism you know it's, it's very hard to translate but we uh, we put poor communities mm -hmm. in, in our local shows right uh, asking governments and authorities f about their You're giving their, giving them a voice exactly you know, voice. and they can negotiate solutions right we have so much more to talk about I'm glad we're gonna have another chance to talk Amari thank you so much for this conversation thank you I appreciate it thank you for having me here I'm glad we've got more time to go on with other subjects Thank you very for today, much. that's our program, and we appreciate your comments, and you can reach us at dialogue at www.wwic.si.edu. I'm George Liston C.A., and you've been watching Dialogue, a co-production of the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars and MHC Networks. Please join us again right here next week, and thank you for watching. And I'm already thank you, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.